Call our February 17th meeting of the Cooper City Council to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilman Womack? Here. Councilman Miller? Here. Mayor Shelton? Here. Vice Mayor Wheaton? Here. For present. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite those that wish to do so to stand for the invocation given tonight by Chris McMichael, pastor of Engrafted Word Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag. <laughs> Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We do thank you for our city. We thank you, Father, for these council members and the wisdom you grant them to lead our city in paths of righteousness. Father, we thank you for your continued protection on our town. Father, we ask you to bless us. Bless this meeting tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, item three, consider approval of agenda as presented. Are there any changes? Well, we did have one change from a uh, review from that uh, work session we moved, which is now item seven eight, which is the bids for favor from consent to new business. Thank you. Is there a motion on the uh, change of agenda? Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All vote. That's correct. Four yes, motion carries. Thank you. Under the consent, of, um, I'm sorry, under old business, uh, 5A, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on February 3rd. Is there a motion? I moved. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. Four yes, motion carries. Under the consent agenda, 6A, uh, consider awarding bid for wood poles for the electric department. 6B, consider awarding bid for four 80-foot steel poles for the electric department. And 6C, consider approval of change order number five for the new police department headquarters. Uh, do we have a motion on the three items on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Mo motion second. Any discussion? All vote. All votes correct. <laughs> Four yes, motion carries. Thank you. Under new business, 7A, hold a public hearing on the annual progress report on the plans of services for the following annexation areas. Old Bridge Road, Falling Water River area, Buck Mountain Road, Dry Valley Road area, East Highway 70 North, Interstate 40 area, West Cookville Interstate area, Shagrag Road area, Rebecca Place, Bunker Hill Road area, Bunker Hill Road, Lovelady area, Free Hill Road, North Washington Avenue, South Willow Avenue, Bennett Road Extension, Old Stewart Road Area, Hall Bennett Road Area, and Mackey Road Area. John Ward. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. I will try to be as uh, swift as possible with this annual report. Um, since 1998, municipalities have been required to prepare and publish an annual, annual report and hold a public hearing on the progress of implementing plans of services for annexation areas until the plans of services are fully implemented. The City Council has annexed 22 areas requiring annual, annual reports. Prior to 2016, the plans of services have been fully implemented in nine of those areas. The locations of the 13 areas for which services specified in the plan of services remain to be completed are depicted on the screen. A comprehensive annual report for these annexation areas was recently published in the Herald Citizen. The report provides as follows. Sanitary sewer is the uh, sewer service is the only service remaining to be provided in the Old Bridge Road, Falling Water River area. The plan of services specifies that sanitary sewer will be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine the expansion of sanitary sewer service in the unserved portions of the present corporate limits. A sewer extension project was completed in 2015, providing sewer to approximately 111 parcels. In 2018, sewer service was extended to nine parcels on Boyd Ferris Road. All services have been provided in the Buck Mountain Road, Dry Valley Road area with the exception of sewer. The plan of service specifies that sewer will be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine the expansion of sanitary sewer service in the unserved portions of the present corporate limits. In the East Highway 70 North I-40 area, all services have been provided with the exception of sewer. The plan of service specifies that sewer will be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine the expansion of sewer service and unserved portions of the present corporate limits. Two phases of sewer installation have been completed, serving approximately 165 parcels. A third phase of sewer expansion was approved in September 2021 that will add an additional seven parcels to sanitary sewer. All services have been provided in the West Cookville I-40 area with the exception of sewer, street lighting, and, uh, and electric service. Uh, the plan of service specified that water service will be provided within five years after the city acquire, acquires a service area. The Water Quality Control Department reports that all water customers in this annexation area have been acquired and now receive water from the city of Cookville. 
Sewer will be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine the expansion of sewer service in unserved uh, portions of the of the current city limits. And street lighting and electric will be provided when one year after the city after the city acquires the service area. Electric service and street lighting have been provided to approximately 98% of the area. Uh, the Cookville Electric Department is working with UCMC to complete electric uh, service within this area at this time. The installation of electric, gas, water, and sewer service in the Highlands Business Park was completed in 2012-2013. An engineering contract has been approved to design sewer improvements starting at I-40 and going to the north and west, which will serve some of the area. All services have been provided to the Shag Rag Road area with the exception of sanitary sewer. Uh, the plan of services specified that sewer will be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, and policies used to determine the expansion of sewer service and unserved portions of the city limits. The Rebecca Place, Bunker Hill Road area, uh, all services have been provided with the exception of sewer. The plan of service specified that sewer will be provided within 20 years after the effective date of annexation. Currently, sanitary sewer has been provided to two customers. In the Bunker Hill Road, Love Lady Road area, all services have been provided with the exception of sewer. Also, uh, this plan of services specified that sewer would be provided within 20 years after the effective date of annexation. In the Freehill Free Road area, all services have been provided with the exception of sewer. Uh, the plan of services for this area specified sewer would be provided within 25 years after the effective date of annexation. All services have been provided to the South Willow Avenue area uh, specified in the plan of service with the exception of sewer. Uh, in this area, the plan specified sewer would be provided based upon the same criteria uh, policy and policies used to determine the expansion of sewer service and unserved portions of the present corporate limits. Uh, currently, sanitary sewer has been provided to 13 parcels in this area. In the Bennett Road Extension area, all services have been provided uh, as specified with the exception of sewer. Uh, this is also uh, newly, uh, portions of this area uh, are included in the newly acquired Double Springs service area. The plan of service specifies that sanitary sewer would be provided based on the same uh, criteria, standards, and policies used to determine the expansion of, of sewer service and unserved portions of the city. A sewer line under I-40, which is required to provide service north of the interstate, was completed in 2016. In 2018, a low-pressure sewer system, was, uh, which provided sewer service to 79 tracks uh, along Highway 70 and, ad and adjacent roads, was installed. An engineering contract has been approved to design sewer improvements starting at I-40 and going to the north and west, which will serve some of this area. For the Old Stewart Road area, all services uh, have been provided with the exception of sewer. Uh, in this area, again, the, the plan states that sewer would be provided based upon the same criteria, standards, uh, and policies used to determine the expansion of sewer in unserved portions of the city. As part of the I-40 interchange project, a sewer line was installed along Tennessee Avenue, serving five parcels, five parcels and eliminating a sewer pump station that served Academy Sports. For the Hall Bennett Road area, all services with the exception of sewer have been completed. And in this area, again, uh, sewer was specified as uh, being provided in the same criteria, standards and policies uh, used to determine uh, expansions and unserved portions of the city. And lastly, the Mackey Farm area, all services have been provided except water service for fire protection, uh, sanitary sewer service and street lights. The plan of service specified that improvements uh, to provide fire hydrants necessary to provide fire protection to this area will be completed within five years after the effect effective date of annexation. Sewer will be provided when economically feasible and based on the same criteria, standards and policies used to determine expansion of sewer and unserved portions of the city. Uh, the Cookville Electric Department is continuing to work with UCMC for completion of installation of street lighting. Um, that concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has during the public hearing. John, at this time we'll open the public hearing portion of the meeting. Do we have anyone that would like to speak about any of these areas? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion uh, to receive the report? I move. Motion second, any questions from the council? All vote. <clears throat> Oh, that's correct. Corey, yes, motion carries. Thank you, 7B. Consider resolution R220203, adoption of official city flags. Mr. Mills. Mayor, council members, the uh, resolution adopting the new uh, flag for the city replacing the city flag is adopted in 1986. Paul 
Paul Black, adopted in 1996 to serve the city well. Um, we've seen significant growth and change since its adoption, and the new flag is proposed to better illustrate and represent the current city. The proposed flag is on the screen. Uh, the new flag, which includes the official city seal in the center there, was designed by Chief Evans of the Police Department. And we would recommend the adoption of Resolution 2202 03 to adopt a new city flag. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? And the, the current flag will be placed in the we History archived. Museum, archived in the History Museum on display for, well, okay. That's correct. Very good. Any other questions? All vote. All votes correct. Four yes, motion carries. Thank you, 7C. Consider uh, approval of cyber security insurance policy. Steve Porter. Mayor and Council, our cybersecurity insurance policy has expired and needs to be renewed. This is a standalone insurance policy that covers our costs in the event of a ransomware attack, data breach, computer fraud, or catastrophic system failure. Our insurance broker, McGriff Insurance, received five quotes from three different insurance companies. The policy they recommend is with Travelers Insurance. It is a 12-month policy that has a $1 million limit with a $100,000 deductible. The premium is $38,980. I recommend that we purchase this policy, and I ask for your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion second. Any questions from the council? All vote. All votes correct. Four yes, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. 7D, consider authorizing the city manager executed professional services agreement with KCI for analysis of alternatives for westward extension of the rail trail. Rick Woods. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. For some time, we've talked about uh, the possibilities of extending uh, the rail trail in a westward uh, direction from the Depot Museum trailhead. <coughs> and uh, the big challenge there is has always been, how do we get across Willow Avenue? And how do we get across Highway 70 uh, to go along the, the, tr the rail because there's not enough railroad right of way there that goes either over or under uh, Willow Avenue or Highway 70. Um, that's been the challenge. So this year we budgeted funds to uh, get some help with a study to help us determine the best route uh, to do that. Um, we contacted John Houghton, who is a transportation specialist with KCI and who worked with us on our pedestrian and bicycle circulation plan. So he's very familiar with our community and with our current plans. And KCI submitted a proposal to identify and recommend a safe and efficient uh, route and provide us with a plan and cost estimates for a preferred alignment. Uh, KCI, again, has had has extensive uh, experience in developing pedestrian bicycle pathways and transportation plans uh, across this state and throughout the country. So we think they're a very good fit uh, to work with us. Uh, they sent a proposal and the agreement is for $29,800 plus reimbursable expenses. So we're asking you tonight to consider allowing the city manager to uh, enter into an agreement not to exceed $31,000 for this plan. Thank you, is there a motion? So moved. Motion is second. Any comments or questions from the council? Um, I think this is something that we've been looking for a while to go to the west. Uh, we've got a plan of some sorts to go toward Monterey from Olga, and this just helps go in the other direction. And the uh, Rail Trail Board has been looking at this for several years. Any other comments? All vote. All votes correct. Four yes, motion carries. Seven E considered committing to purchase one side load sanitation truck and one front load sanitation truck in fiscal year 2022-23 to lock in pricing. Greg Brown. Mayor Council, uh, during the process of acquiring uh, budget numbers for sanitation trucks for next year's budget, our suppliers were telling us to expect uh, long delays in getting the trucks after we order them. Also, the numbers they were uh, giving us to purchase the trucks were anywhere from sixty to ninety to hundred thousand dollars higher than what we've been paying. One of our suppliers, uh, Municipal Equipment, has ordered a front load and side load truck in January. 
and I would like to reserve that truck for our use. We can lock the prices in, which is just uh, very close to what we've been paying the last year for trucks. They'll be delivered in June and July. We'll be purchasing them through the source well contract. Uh, the price for the front load truck is $273,676.62. The side load truck is $296,586. We would not uh, purchase these trucks for the next fiscal year, but I would like to go ahead and reserve them so we would have them uh, when they do come in. I would request your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? Second. Motion second. Any comments or questions from the council? All vote. All votes correct. Four yes, motion carries. Thank Seven you. F, consider awarding bid for electric system right of way easement maintenance and authorize the city manager to execute a contract with Loftus Underground, uh, Carl Haney. Mayor and council members, we received bids uh, for our right of way maintenance contract. Uh, this bid is to provide right of way maintenance for a three year term. Uh, the bids were calculated uh, or evaluated on bid documents, labor and equipment cost experience and the proposed equipment for those that, uh, that submitted their proposals. Contract does require a three million insurance policy with the city and the contract also requires payment and performance bonds and being a drug-free drug workplace affidavit. Uh, the contract can be terminated within 30 days of written notification and I would recommend your approval to uh, award this to Loftus Underground LLC. Thank you. Is there a motion? <laughs> a second, any discussion? Yes. Um, so Wolf did not meet specs, correct? That, that is correct. They, they, when they submitted it, they were found unresponsive in, in two categories, both their equipment and their documents. Uh, so they, they basically did not meet specs in those two categories. Yes, Any other questions? All vote. All votes correct. Or yes, motion carries. Thank you. 7G, consider awarding bid for 2022 uh, TOC analyzer water quality control. Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and Council, we solicited bids for a total organic carbon analyzer for our water plant. We received a bid from Suez Analytical Instruments for $23,530, and I'd recommend approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All vote. Oh, that's correct. Four yes, motion carries. Seven H, consider awarding bids for semi-annual paving, asphalt mix, milling, and mineral aggregate. Public Works Department, Greg Brown. Mayor Council, we recently received bids for paving, milling, um, and mineral aggregate. I would recommend um, approval of these bids. It's a semi-annual bid. Thank you. Is there a motion? Second. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll vote. All votes correct. Three yes, motion carries. Thank you. Well, that concludes our agenda portion of the meeting. We have time at the end for citizens that would like to address the council on non-agenda items. Do we have anyone that want to address the council? We do have uh, item nine then, which is um, receive the city's financial report for 7121 through 123121. Ms. Emma. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the, the full financial report is in your packet. I am not going to go through the entire report and every fine. I just wanted to point out some highlights for you of some fines, and we'll jump right into the general fund. In the general fund, our total revenue is at 46% of budget um, for the first six months. And the largest revenue stream, our local taxes, is at 45% of budget. That's typical because of the timing of the collections of those taxes. And one revenue stream I wanted to point out to you, the charges for services, even though that's a very small portion of our budget, that revenue stream is basically our leisure services programs. And they were impacted significantly by COVID-19. There were months where we had zero revenue in there. Pre-COVID, we were collecting about $270,000 that year before, pre -COVID, before COVID. And last year, we collected $162,000. So for the six months, we're at $116,000. So that revenue is starting to come back. So that's a good thing to see. 
operating expenses, the department overall are at 45% of budget for operating expenses, right we, where we expect them to be. Um, one department is slightly above that. Parks and maintenance is at 53% of budget, and that's because they've already had a large workers' comp claim and an unplanned retirement. So when we get to the year end and do budget amendments, you'll see that when we do the budget <laughs> amendments. And then for capital, we budgeted $1,871,000 in capital purchases this year. Um, so far through December 31st, we've actually paid for, received and paid for $792,000, about 42%. A lot of the items have already been approved and ordered, but due to supply chain issues, we have not taken delivery of them and paid for them. So. In a little more detail, our two largest revenue streams in the general fund are our local option sales tax and our property tax. Sales tax is always two months behind. So in this reporting period, we actually have five payments and we've collected just over $7 million. Oops. Um, $7 million, um, $31,000. And compared to the same period last year, that's up 13.9%. We actually budgeted just over $15 million for um, local option sales tax this year. And with five, just five payments, we're already at 46.5% of budget. And property tax collections started coming in in October, um, October 1st. And for the first three months of the collection period, we've collected $4,113,000. That's about 43% of the tax aggregate. Last year it was about 45%, so we're slightly behind collections, but I believe in January we've caught back up there. The actual aggregate came in at $9,555,000 compared to last year's aggregate of $9,309,000. So the actual tax aggregate is up at about $249,000. <laughs> One other fund I wanted to tell you about was the General Obligation Debt Service Fund. Um, we started the year with $11,242,000 in that fund. Revenues are about 56% of budget. The largest revenue stream in there is, a low, is the state shared sales tax. And again, it is two month, runs two months behind. So we're looking at five payments there. And we've collected $1,555,000 compared to $1,239,000 last year. And we are at 48.8% of budget. In our debt, we started July with $18,785,000 in debt. We had four bonds outstanding. Since then, we've had two major bond transactions that we've completed. We refunded the 2015 bonds with the 2021A. We did that back in July, and we saved the city about $467,000 in costs there. And then in August, we issued the 2021B for a total of 9,175,000. And the proceeds for that are being used to complete the police headquarters. And then we should have about two or $3 million left to get started on the 10th Street Road project. The other fund I wanted to call your attention to was our employee insurance fund. This is a fund we started um, the fiscal year with $3.5 million in reserves. And during this six month period, the expenditures for claims and Blue Cross Blue Shield admin fees have exceeded the premiums that we paid into that fund by $1.5 million. Typically, we do have a loss the second part of the plan year because our plan actually operates on a calendar year. So that second half, that last six months or the first six months of our fiscal year, everybody's hit their deductibles. So expenses, claim expenses typically are higher at that point, but this year they've been higher than they have been in the past. So we did make a change to premiums, deductibles, and out-of-pocket. That kicked in in January. So the city manager and I are kind of watching it very closely. We get claims reports weekly, and we'll be watching it to see how what kind of impact that has. And also, um, later in the next couple of weeks, we'll be meeting with our Blue Cross Blue Shield rep to get some insight on what they're seeing that we could possibly do. And then finally, my last slide, this is just the highlight of the utility departments, the electric department, the water quality control, and the gas department. And they're all performing as expected. We see typical results. 
their operating revenues are all about 50% or more, except for gas, but gas is typically a little bit behind. They're at 40%. Their revenues are more seasonal than the other utilities. They get more of their revenue in December, January, and February, the colder months. And all their operating expenses are pretty much typical and as we would expect them to be at this time. So the electric department still has one bond outstanding. 1,505,000 and it matures in 2027. And the water department has one note still remaining outstanding with the state revolving loan fund and it matures in 2031. And it has a balance of 1,133,000. So that's all I have for you. I'll be happy to answer any questions, but I recommend you accept the report. Thank you. Uh, no vote required to accept the report. And uh, we have any comments or questions from the council? Um, thank you very much for all your work on this. When we get the auto report back and there's no bad findings, it's a good oh. thing for the city. So thank you. Well, thank you. I can't take all the credit. We have great department directors. They kind of manage all their departments. They have good internal controls and they operate them very well. And it makes my job a whole lot easier. So I won't take all the credit. Yeah. Thank you. Though. I, I do think it is important for the council to note in the public that we did have no audit findings uh, with the financial report, which I think is always excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the council about anything else? We're adjourned.